Good afternoon. Thanks so much uh, for being with us today. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to share about the UAB Nathan Shock Center. Uh, my name is Tom Buford. I am the co-director of the UAB Nathan Shock Center. Uh, it's my privilege to help lead the center with our uh, director and as many of you know, Dr. Stephen Austad. The theme of the UAB Nathan Shock Center is the comparative bioenergetics of aging. So the theme uh, in some ways evolved out of Steve's work on uh, comparing lifespan and health span across a wide variety of animal species. And as well as the expertise that we have at UAB, which is uh, really strongly centered around uh, the production uh, of energy at both the cellular, organ, and organi organism levels. <laughs> So our administrative structure is uh, essentially a five-core model. As with all shock centers, we of course have an administrative uh, core and a research development core, which is uh, essentially our pilot core. And then we have three research cores, the organismal energetics core, the mitochondrial health assessment core, and the data analytics core. So because today's overviews are very brief, um, I'm only gonna briefly mention the first two um, and spend just a, maybe a hair more time on the research cores themselves. So the concept of our shock center is in some ways pretty straightforward that you know energy production is at the core of both health and ultimately lifespan. So whether you're talking about um, an individual cell or whether you're talking about an organ uh, for proper function, or whether you're talking about um, a whole organism, whether animal or ultimately human, you, you're talking about the need to efficiently produce energy uh, to, for the you know, cell or the organ or the organism to ultimately function properly. And so that's how we've uh, kind of conceived uh, the shock center, partly through our expertise, as well as kind of the value as it relates to aging biology. And so then you'll see that kind of permeate through our uh, cores. And then ultimately, you know, anchored by, um, you know, a fairly unique core in the basic sciences and, and that our data analytics core is, you know, uh, central to our purpose. So as I said, I won't mention uh, very much about our administrative core, um, but I will say that a couple of unique things um, that you know you might find. Uh, one is our aging biology update. So this is a kind of a regular collation. Uh, you know, we have people who go through the aging literature and collate. You know, what's the new, um, newest from the you know the best and brightest in the field of aging biology. And so now uh, you can find this on our website. Uh, it's regularly released on Twitter. Um, also, I, I believe you can get an email to you directly on our listserv. And so just kind of a, a one-stop shop for kind of new updates on uh, new papers in the field of aging biology. Uh, the other is uh, somewhat of maybe Steve's pet project and uh, called Methuselah's Bestiary. And so you can find this on our website. And it's essentially um, a quick primer uh, for, you know, people maybe new to the field on, you know, what to expect in terms of ranges of lifespan from different species. And so ranging from extremely short-lived organisms to some organisms living hundreds of years, you know, what can we learn from uh, the differences in lifespan of these animals and, um, and what can those comparisons uh, provide us in terms of insights into um, aging biology, lifespan, health span, and so much of this uh, comes from Steve's own work and which has kind of led the theme of you know, comparative uh, energetics. <laughs> uh, next, I'll mention our, as I said, our research development core. Uh, so often this is a core of great interest to the, the uh, broader community. And you know, I'll mention that our pilot program is available to both UAB and non-UAB investigators. Um, to be eligible, you have to, your proposal has to include at least use of at least one, um, possibly more of our Nathan Shock Center course. Um, 
you know, if you're external uh, to UAB, uh, you want to make sure and get with the correlators uh, in particular if you're external, because uh, it'll often operate on a service based, uh, like coupon based um, service structure. And so you want to make sure up front you understand kind of uh, the dynamics of how that's going to work. Now, typically, uh, we've uh, scheduled three $25,000 awards annually. Uh, there may be times where we have an additional one or we may have funds to support additional smaller projects, but this is at minimum what we're shooting for. And so uh, interested investigators this is the, the key I'll just mention is that if you're interested in submitting a pilot project, I highly, highly suggest you contact the RDC leaders early on uh, for guidance on the process to ensure one, it meets the mission, um, does it you know, align with what the research core leaders are expecting? You know, the, is the budget really going to be feasible? And so you can see our leaders there at the uh, RDC core, Christy Carter, John Hartman, and Leo Soon. And so uh, they'll help you get connected with the um, research core leaders that kind of facilitate communication as it's needed, um, kind of guide you on past experience, what you might need. So I uh, just highly recommend to contact them early. Uh, next, uh, you know, our organismal energetic score is directed by uh, Dr. Tim Nagy and also supported by Dr. Carter, as well as Daniel Smith, Dr. Daniel Smith. So that um, the organismal core is really focused on the whole animal uh, assessment of energy. And so I uh, can do it in a wide variety of species, um, ranging from things like zebrafish and uh, sea elegans and drosophila to um, mice, rats, um, potentially larger animals even. Um, they measure through a variety of different ways, body composition, as you can see some of the methods there, as well as whole body metabolism um, under diverse uh, conditions. And along with that, as you, you know, we might expect also measuring uh, very closely temporal patterns in things like food and water intake, as well as uh, physical activity uh, energy expenditure. So just a couple of examples here of work that they've done. Uh, you can see on the left, uh, this is body composition assessment of zebrafish. Uh, so you can see on the y-axis, uh, either fat or lean mass plotted you know, relative to body weight. And another example on the right, you can see this is a project they were doing, which is relative, they, they were evaluating UCP1, but they wanted to evaluate the, um, the fraction of signal from brown fat. And so they were using a mouse model uh, MRI. You can also get um, detailed evaluations of energy expenditure, either from total, inclusive of resting energy expenditure, and um, active energy expenditure from physical activity. And you can see in this case, it was an evaluation of calorie restriction. And so if you have two models, you want to evaluate intervention and look at the gaps in energy expenditure between the two. And so uh, uh, another, the last method I'll, I'll mention here is you can see now uh, newer methods to evaluate uh, oxygen consumption in uh, things like Drosophila, C. elegans, or even uh, embryos, uh, particularly the zebrafish here they mentioned. And so you can see, if you look at the top, uh, the top graph, you can see the black line, which represents blank air. And essentially, you can see the oxygen um, content of the chamber depleting, and depleting at different rates depending on if you have one animal, two animals, uh, the different sexes, and so. Uh, all of those things influencing oxygen intake. And so uh, you can see the bottom, uh, the bottom graph with C. elegans, you can see the same thing. You know, you can see the number of, um, the number of worms in the chamber influencing, you know, the oxygen contact, you know, content. And so you can um, accurately quantify whole animal um, oxygen utilization. So again, if you want to uh, do projects with them, I highly uh, suggest uh, reach out and they can help you understand, you know, in this case, sometimes with shipping of animals isn't a possibility, but they work with, you know, 
large number of investigators to come up with sol potential solutions to help uh, you know answer the questions that they're looking to to answer. Next, I'll highlight our mitochondrial health assessment core uh, with leaders, as you can see, uh, Dr. Jinhua Zhang, Dr. Scott Ballinger, and Dr. Victor Darley Usmar. And so the uh, primary um, focus of the mitochondrial core is uh, biochemical analyses of uh, primarily mitochondrial function or related, uh, related parameters. As you can see there, autophagy and mitophagy is a primary uh, focus of Dr. Zhang. You know, other things you can see there, um, such as uh, mitochondrial nuclear exchange models, um, you can look at a variety of uh, oxidative stress parameters. So I'll just um, give you a, a few examples kind of from the core, but again, if there's something in the realm of mitochondria and you're interested, you know, I, I think this group can really, uh, really help. So I encourage you to reach out. So one of the newest uh, things that's come out from the core um, is uh, largely from Dr. Darley Usmar and his colleagues at uh, other several other institutions, is the ability to measure mitochondrial function from frozen tissues. And so I know we've had several people already reach out and trying to uh, utilize the method and for troubleshooting. And so I uh, don't have time today. Um, and you can obviously go through the paper and go through, you know, contact Dr. Darley Usmar about uh, some of the specifics of the protocol. But the point being that you're able to utilize um, methods that previously you had to have fresh permeabilized tissue, but now from frozen tissue to be able to uh, accurately measure mitochondrial function. So I think it's a big game changer in a lot of ways, particularly for say, especially if people want, I think of want to use human tissue or you, know, you have to ship samples across the country. Uh, it could be very, very useful. Um, or in, you know, in this case, they, looked, they also evaluated uh, frozen platelets. So if you have cell types which um, have very high rates of turnover, um, you know, a short, uh, short lifespan, then you, you, um, you know, have a new opportunity, I think, in that space. And so uh, if this is something you're interested in, I, you know, suggest, that, as I said, the reference is down here at the bottom of the slide. Now read that article. Um, and then, you know, reach out to Dr. Darley Usmar if there's uh, something you're interested in. Um, I won't spend a lot of time here just for sake of time, but I do have uh, assays for uh, mitochondrial DNA dance, uh, PCR-based method. And as I said, you know, other number of other methods uh, for standard protein uh, biochemistry as well, you know, measures of autophagy, mitophagy. No. But another one of the most, uh, you know, a, a very innovative method, uh, Dr. Ballinger was highly involved in this uh, development of this process, is the development of mito mitochondrial nuclear exchange mice. And so the idea here is essentially that you're able to um, get a nuclear genome and a mitochondrial genome uh, from different strains of animals, and so end up with a pup with you know, uh, mitochondrial and nuclear genomes from two different lines. And so in essence, what you're able to do is evaluate the impact directly of the mitochondrial genome on various uh, parameters of energy production, body composition. And so you can see a couple of the references here where they go through the protocol and how to set it up and the theory behind it, essentially taking a nucleus and transferring the nucleus um, into um, uh, a new animal. And so, uh, you know, these are just examples of, you know, where they look at essentially isolating the impact of the mitochondrial genome on uh, body fat or metabolic efficiency under different conditions and, you know, under chow, particularly under high, high fat feeding, you know, when you challenge the system uh, with an energetic challenge. So, uh, again, just a, a, a great opportunity. If it's something you're interested in, I uh, suggest you know, reach out to Dr. Ballinger. And finally, uh, you know, I'll highlight our data analytics score. And so um, you can see on the left, a few examples I've picked from the literature where uh, there's been calls to improve 
reporting standards and uh, rigor and statistical analyses in um, animal and preclinical research. And so uh, our data analytics core, I think is unique in a couple of ways. You know, first and foremost, I um, mean that you have a, a, a basic science focused uh, data analytics core that is, you know, has expertise in the field of aging. And that's a, that's a pretty small niche. Um, and so we have found that there's been great interest uh, from the community in use of uh, their services. Uh, secondly, I'll mention that you know, a couple of years ago, Dr. Allison and Dr. Brown moved to the uh, Indiana University. And so our shock center is not just a UAB shock center, but it's also, it's more, it's really a UAB Indiana uh, Nathan shock center. And so the analytics core, uh, works in a variety of different capacities from um, helping investigators say they want to do pilot projects, helping them with uh, experimental design setup or statistical analyses. Uh, they are working with uh, a large number of groups across the country on high level uh, data analyses and a lot of um, larger uh, high, high profile um, studies in a lot of cases, sometimes pulling multiple data sets together. So I know there's been a lot of discussion on, you know, can we collate all the CR studies that we have or pull some big summaries together from say the ITP uh, program. And so they're, they're involved in a lot of uh, these, these types of things. And so they're also on the scientific side, continue to work on new uh, statistical methods, uh, methodologies and, and how they might apply. Uh, you can see an example they share there in terms of uh, looking at lifespan, uh, different ways to kind of compare uh, the impact of um, different interventions, whether genetic or uh, behavioral or pharmacologic. And they also consistently are kind of doing education uh, for the field. So they have uh, a number of different um, areas in which they can support. Uh, you can see many of them here from you know, understanding the impact of missing data, uh, looking at lifespan analyses, longitudinal data. And also, uh, you know, heavily involved in you know, understanding of reproducibility. You know, it's been a big uh, area in our, our field. Uh, understanding, you know, methods to evaluate, you know, whether or not a study is, you know, a one-off. Uh, which in a lot of cases is, you know, there are many cases where discrepancies have come about and helping to ensure, well, will this data be re reproducible? So as I said, if you're interested, if you're interested in a pilot project with us, I highly suggest that, you know, you talk with, with the core. You know, or you might just have interest in a larger area, you know, from the aging biology perspective in, in something uh, a bit bigger. You know, this is a, a, a really uh, good group to engage with. So with that, I will say thank you for your time. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to share about the Na uh, UAB Nathan Shock Center. Uh, I wanna thank Dr. Ostad uh, for his leadership in developing the center and as well as all our core leaders who are really uh, the key to um, supporting all of the great science and supporting all of the investigators who uh, utilize uh, our services. And, and last but not least, obviously, I want to uh, make sure and acknowledge and thank the National Institute on Aging, uh, through which we couldn't um, do all of this work, and as well as AGE um, and AFAR for helping to set up these sessions. So I look forward to hearing uh, everything else that um, is shared at the AGE meeting uh, for the other presentations uh, from the other Nathan Shock Centers. And Look forward to um, engaging more soon. So thanks so much for your time.